Please welcome the official party to the stage. Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Ryan D. McCarthy. Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville. Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael A. Grinston. Director of the National Museum of the United States Army, Ms. Tammy Call. Accompanied by Acting Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Christopher C. Miller. and Chairman to the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark A. Milley. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 20th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark A. Milley. Uh, to all of you, thank you, and to all of those of you who are watching, uh, thank you so much for participating in today's events. Today is Veterans Day, uh, and on the 11th day, in the 11th month of the 11th hour, in 1918, the war to end all wars came to an end. It was the final day of 47 brutal days of fighting in the Meuse-Argonne, stopping today only because of the armistice that was declared to end the Great War. That offensive was the largest battle in U.S. history with 1.2 million Americans fighting and dying, and 26,000 of them paid the ultimate sacrifice in only 47 days. And it was made much worse by a global pandemic, the Spanish flu. We cannot truly appreciate the sacrifice of our soldiers from the Continental Army to today or comprehend what they went through unless we see the weapons they use, feel the uniforms they wear, hear the stories they told, or read the letters they wrote. You and I will never fight through the haze and the mustard gas of the Meuse Argonne. We're not going to hear the whiz and the snap of Wehrmacht rounds while assaulting the last 100 yards of Omaha Beach. And no, we're not going to suffer the blistering cold of the Chosen Reservoir or smell the smoke of the Idrang Valley. But we can come here. We can see the relics and hear the stories through the eyes and the voices of the individual soldiers who endured so much for the cause of freedom and, and their unrelenting devotion to the Constitution of the United States, the moral North Star for all of us in uniform. It is that document that gives purpose to our service. It is that document that gives purpose to this museum, and we in uniform are willing to die to pass it on to the next generation. In it are the ideas and the values that make up this experiment called the United States of America. And the motto of the United States Army for over 200 years, since 14 June 1775, the motto has been this we will defend, and that this refers to the Constitution and to protect the liberty of the American people. You see, we are unique among armies. We are unique among militaries. We do not take an oath to a king or a queen, a tyrant or a dictator. We do not take an oath to an individual. No, we do not take an oath to a country a tribe, or religion. We take an oath to the Constitution. And every soldier that is represented in this museum, every sailor, airman, marine, coast guardsman, each of us will protect and defend that document regardless of personal price. That has been true across generations that are on display in this building, in this great museum, and allows all of us to connect and be forever tied to those who came before us. We will never turn our back on our duty to protect and defend the idea that is America, the Constitution of the United States, against all enemies, foreign 
and domestic. Back when our Army was first formed only 18 months later, Thomas Paine wrote some famous words in an essay entitled The Crisis. And he wrote, these are the times that try men's souls. And the summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of their country. But he who stands by it deserves the love of man and women. For tyranny like hell is not easily conquered. And from 1775 till today, the United States Army has stood there, has stood on the wall, stood in the breach, and defended the liberty of Americans. Thank you. Happy Veterans Day. May God bless the United States Army, and may God bless America.